just want to make sure you understand. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Today, I am so excited to say, we are going to be talking about God's Not Dead, We the People. If you're not familiar with the God's Not Dead franchise, do not worry, I'll bring you up to speed. This upcoming movie is in fact the fourth instalment of what is sort of jokingly known as the Fast and Furious franchise of the Christian movie world. <laughs> it's a pretty wacky series, every movie has been pretty strongly panned. I'll share a Vox review that I think is really good titled How the Christian Movie Series God's Not Dead Fails to be Christian, in which Vox asserts that it's less about being a Christian and more about a persecution complex, which is so true. Every movie revolves around a Christian character somehow defending their freedom to express their religion and follow Jesus. The problem with these movies, in my opinion, is that Christians are persecuted in plenty of places in the world, some other religions more so, but if you wanted to make a movie about the persecution of Christians, set it in Afghanistan or North Korea, make something powerful that matters. Instead, it's this very American exaggeration of things that would never happen in reality that just fuels this sort of fear of outsiders and they're taking away our religion and the leads to the kind of crazy evangelical behaviour that we've looked at on this channel before. So that's my problem with the series in general, I feel like it takes Christian persecution and makes it a laughing stock, it makes it a joke. They're picking a fight that doesn't exist, basically. So I will give a quick, very brief rundown of each of the God is Dead God is Dead? That's, I'm becoming Kevin Sorbo in the first one. I'm going to give a quick rundown of all of the God is Not Dead movies, so if you don't want any spoilers, do skip ahead. So the first film, God's Not Dead, released in 2014. Josh, college student, evangelical Christian. He is enrolled in a philosophy class taught by Kevin Sorbo, character name I have forgotten. Sorbo is an atheist professor and demands that in order to pass his class, his students sign a form that says God is dead. <laughs> <laughs> which is something that would definitely happen in real life. In true, yeah, atheists are just evil and silly fashion, it turns out that Kevin Sorbo is an atheist because he hates God for his mother's death, because cheers for that stellar representation, lads. They have loads of debates, a Muslim student converts to Christianity, it's very dramatic and silly. God's not dead too, the godening. Too god too furious. <laughs> God's not dead too, stars Melissa Joan Hart as the lead, which is so sad. I love her so much. I named my first plant after her. It was Melissa Joan String of Hearts. It died. I killed it. But still, I love her and I'm so sad for her that she's in this movie. <laughs> Melissa Joan Hart is a history teacher in a high school, also a devout evangelical Christian because every main character in these movies is, obviously. She turns one of her grieving students to Jesus because everybody knows that the best time to get them is when they're down. She uses some scripture in her class to relate to historical events and then gets in some serious trouble and ends up going to court. Melissa Joan Hart, uh, her character name is Grace, legal action is taken against her, she goes to court because, you know, separation of church and state. It's, it's fine, she's just persecuted, it's very hard to be an evangelical Christian in the USA, we, we all know it to be true. She gets an atheist attorney. There's a weird side plot about this blogger who like used to be left-wing. Her cancer is miraculously cured so now she believes in God and she starts blogging about her journey with God. I'm not even joking. Back to Melissa Joan Hart, the prosecutor in the lawsuit declares that this case will once and for all prove that God is dead because that apparently is what Christians are up against in the USA right now, is, is people people said trying to say God is dead. Court's not going well, Grace is all discouraged, so her friends sing a song for her. She has some speech about how the United States will crumble if she's found guilty, because this woman and her persecution complex are more important than anything in the country. Anyway, she's found not guilty, the court finds in her favour, whatever, it's pretty obvious. But there's a post credit scene that's important for the explaining of the next film. <laughs> There's a pastor called David in the movie, played by David White, who is sort of irrelevant, but basically there to set up the next movie. In the post credit scene, he gets arrested because he didn't turn in his sermons to the government, and that leads us into God is Not Dead 3, aka God is Not Dead, A Light in the Darkness, which is the craziest of all of them so far. They really ramp up in excitement. You might have thought there was some excitement with his court case, or some sort of appeal or something, but no, the end credits of the last movie, he goes to prison, the very beginning of the third movie, 
He's released from prison. <laughs> He's the pastor of the church, which is on college grounds. That sparks some controversy because separation of church and state, again, something the Christians in these movies just keep forgetting exists. So the college is going to shut down the church. So they sue the college because we just we love lawsuits in movies. Someone throws a brick at the church and it catches on fire and like burns down. That kills the protagonist's friend. The student who threw the brick confesses to the reverend. They have a fight, the kid is arrested, the fact that he assaulted a student kind of harms his case. Eventually he sorts the whole thing out by praying to God and realising that the court case was a mistake and God doesn't really want us to, this isn't the right church for God. I don't really know why he couldn't have prayed and gotten the answer at the beginning of the movie. I guess God has an ear for storytelling. He drops the charges, they tear down the church, whatever, he's gonna open a new church down the road that's better and blackjack and hookers, whatever. That's the gist of the first three movies. So, the new movie, the next instalment, coming soon, God's Not Dead, We the People. AKA God's Not Dead 4. What was, Fast and, what was the fourth Fast and Furious movie? Oh, well, 4 was just Fast and Furious. So this one, Going by Fast and Furious logic, this one should just be called God's Not Dead again. Brackets God's Not Dead 4. But no, it's We the People. I'm going to read you the description from the official God's Not Dead YouTube page, and then we're going to watch the trailer. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. This is just a bit of silliness. I only dislike, well, A, because I'm a movie buff, I love movies, and these movies are terrible. They really misrepresent atheists, so I'm like personally invested in that. But also, I think they really harm the cause of actually defending the persecution of religious people, in this case Christians, by making them look stupid. <laughs> I think it I think it harms the case of persecution against Christians way more than it helps. I think all it does is create, you know, othering and outsiders. So that's that's just my little disclaimer that I'm not ripping on this to be a dick. I think this is harming Christians and atheists alike. Coming to theatres this fall. The God's Not Dead franchise continues in God's Not Dead, We the People. As Reverend Dave, Dave's back, Dave is called to defend a group of Christian homeschooling families. He finds himself taken aback by the interference of the government. I can't believe the government would interfere in the education of kids. I can't believe they would make sure that kids are getting a proper education. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Believing the right to educate their own children is a freedom worth fighting for, Reverend Dave is called to Washington DC to testify in a landmark congressional hearing that will determine the future of religious freedom in our country for years to come. It makes it sound like this is something real that's happening to Christians in America right now. Bit of background, I know some Christians in this country who have had Christian homeschooling and they've taken American curriculums for their homeschooling. You can teach kids whatever the fuck you want if you're homeschooled. Like, they have to have the basic education that you need to become an adult. Like, they have to have a good educational grounding. And I don't think anyone, Christian or not, should be trying to remove that safety net that ensures that kids get educated properly. But then they also get all their biblical education on top of that. So it's like, what more could you need? Like, what what is this movie supposed to be fighting against? <laughs> all right, let's do it. I mean, we've had fires and fights and deaths. Like, how, how are they going to ramp it up in this one, is my question. Freedom is a fragile thing. And it's never more than one generation away from... Is that Reagan? Is that Ronald Reagan? Freedom is a fragile thing. And it's never more than one generation away from extinction. And those in world history who have known freedom and then lost it... They're so... They're always so hung up on the Founding Fathers and the Constitution, and it's like, they would be in the camp opposite you here, brother. Have never known it again. Let's face it, your God, your book, they're in the way. You feel that you're making a last ditch stand for your faith, and you've chosen this as a hill that you're willing to die on. Yeah, bro, don't die on this stupid hill. Our whole faith started because one man chose a hill he was willing to die on. <laughs> I would like to call this hearing of the House Subcommittee to order. Right now, that's definitely on the way. Is that a courtroom? That's not a courtroom, right? The House Subcommittee to order. Right now, that's definitely on the way to mandate universal educational guidelines. Once we decide what a child needs to know, it becomes imperative that every child know it. Would somebody please think of the children? Remember the visit we got from social services the other day? I'm here to review your homeschooling environment. Religion has been removed from our schools. 
They're teaching kids that they don't need God. If your children do not show up at school a week from Monday, you will be charged with contempt of court, meaning you will be incarcerated. Shannon said last night she doesn't want her parents going to jail. This is bigger than just homeschooling. I think we should fight this. I, I'm so baffled. What, in this fictional world, you're not allowed to teach religion to your children at home? That doesn't make any sense. Religious education is a core part of the curriculum in most places. We need to. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to see the Abe Lincoln crash zoom one more time. That was too good. I think we should fight this. We need to. I just want to make sure you understand what you're fighting here. Our district teaches a revisionist version of history. If God is for us, who can be against us? Am I around here? Just about everyone else. If, if God is for us, who can be against us? Again, the Christians that are being actually heavily persecuted in other countries would probably have something to say to you, I'm just saying. The country is just now beginning to realize that unity means winning under our terms. For 2,000 years, men have been trying to get rid of Christianity. What makes you think that you can accomplish what they couldn't? They didn't have an 80. For 2,000 years, men have been trying to get rid of Christianity. I'm sorry, which religion was it that stormed the globe, burning every book that referenced any religion that wasn't Christianity? Who was responsible for the Crusades? Like, it's not exactly something you can hold against modern Christians. But if you're gonna go there, Reverend... Do you think that you can accomplish what they couldn't? They didn't have an 83% approval rating. Oh my God, no. he's he's That's part of your plan, isn't it? Keep us all divided. God's not dead, he's surely alive. It's the newsboys, right? Yeah, what an absolute fucking bop. Liberties. My freedoms! Look, there's so many American flags in this. We should go, once we finish the trailer, we should go back and count the American flags. Is a country so blessed to whom much is given, much will be required. You see those statues and those monuments out there? They say, you work for us. You are out of order, Mr. Hill. The government of the people, by the people, for... And then everybody clapped. People! There's another one! I'm just saying, in the Old Testament, God was real jealous of people worshipping other idols. Like, real jealous. This movie, really worshipping the flag in this trailer. I'm just saying. Right, let's flag count. Let's just go by how many scenes there are with flags because I'm already starting to lose count. One. Two. Three. Four. We'll do shots. <laughs> Five. So many crash zooms. Six. Of course the homeschooling Christian family has an American flag outside their house. Just to really hammer the point in. Seven. <laughs> so much slow-mo, but like really bad slow-mo as well. That's not even interesting. It's like they're trying to make the trailer longer. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my favourite one. Eight. Uh, nine. Ten. I've run out of hands. <laughs> Oh, looking through the window in the rain. Oh, 11, 12. Oh, 13, 14. 15. 16. 17. 18. 19. 20. 21. 22, 23. Is that 23? 24! Of course, there's a slow-mo flag at the end, how could I forget? Well, the final shot is just a random slow-mo American flag. 24 shots featuring an American flag in the trailer. So, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? I just can't wait. There's just some, in terms of filmmaking, there's just some really questionable choices. I'd love to know who made this trailer because there's just some... Wow, like, why is there that black flashing near the end? 
I love the the villainous introduction of the social services worker as well, who's like, you're teaching them about God? And they're like so worried about sending their kids to public school. Why, why can't they just go to Sunday school at church and you can teach them after school about God and then they can learn their main curriculum at school? I don't understand. Anyway, I'm really excited. <laughs> I know I keep talking about that shot, but I just want to—I just want to look at the zoom again because I'm—I swear the last one was like super out of focus or um, just low resolution because of the because it zoomed so much. I just want to look at it again and confirm. It's like they've done this this crash zoom to illustrate some sort of point. The only thing that stands out to me, other than how hilarious it is, is how blurry the final shot is. Look at him. There's no hard edges here at all. That's We the People, the trailer. I kind of like, it looks so absurd. I kind of want to watch it. Would you guys be interested in a review? Would it, would it be weird if I reviewed the latest God's Not Dead movie? Because I would kind of love to. <laughs> The comments are really great on this video as well. The series itself has such notoriety now that it's full of Christians being like, this does not speak for us. <laughs> like, gotta say, this is slowly turning into the Christian version of the Fast franchise. I held it together until the God's Not Dead song kicked in. Oh my god, me too. God's Not Dead 10, you know the drill. Pretty sure this movie is acting as a dog whistle for the rising QAnoners running for education boards and homeschooling their children because of the radical liberal school system. So this is what bearded alternate reality Owen Wilson has been busy helping create. Can't wait for God's Not Dead Tokyo Drift. When a Christian movie has more American flags than crosses, there's a problem. Exactly my point. This series is the embodiment of the and then everyone clapped meme. The symbolism in this trailer is on point. Tons of shots of American monuments overshadowing any shots of the cross. I could go on, honestly, there are so many good and funny comments. You should just go to the trailer and have a look just for the comments if you want to read more, because they are brilliant. There you go. That's God's Not Dead, We The People. Can't wait. Do let me know if you would be interested in a review, because I think that could be really fun. Give me your reviews if you have watched any of the series. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do like this video if you liked it. Share it if you found it interesting or funny. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. If you want to hear more from me, you can come hang out on my gaming channel. You can come hang out live on Twitch a few times a week. I would like to give a huge thank you and a shout out to my giant chickens over on Patreon. Aaron Reese, Amber, Chick-fil-A Death Fries, Conla Chicken Maximus Lions, God damn it, Conla. Izzy, Lady Ray, Lucy Lamprell, Manny, Mr. Creosote, PMD Slut, and Taxman. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Do have a very lovely week, and I will see you really soon.